In actual blob storage, there are three different tiers of access for each blob. Things can either be in hot, cool, or archive storage, but moving files between those levels has always been a little bit difficult. But not with the lifecycle rules. Let's match on that. Hi everybody and welcome to another episode of the ASP Net Monsters. In today's episode, I'm going to talk a little bit about lifecycle rules inside of Azure Blob Storage. Um, so to start with, uh, there are a couple of different tiers of access inside of Azure Blob Storage. So the default access tier is hot storage. Um, so I have that set up on this uh, blob storage right here. You can see that the storage is hot, um, which is, I assume just means that it's awesome. Uh, slightly less performant than that is the cool tier of blob storage. So the trade-off there is that it is slower to access something in cool storage than it is in hot storage, uh, but it costs you a little bit less to store it in that. And then finally, there is another tier called archive, uh, and accessing files there can be very slow, and uh, it is very cheap as a trade-off. So I don't know how this is implemented on the back end for sure, but I did read an article a while ago talking about how it might be on tape drives uh, to get access to this. So that means that the archive storage is like maybe an hour to retrieve the file that you're looking for. Uh, and you can't actually access it. You have to pull it up into a cool or hot tier before you can access it. I can't remember the, how that pricing works, but I have some vague memory that it was like it's really cheap to store things on in archive storage, but then the retrieval actually costs more money than you would expect it to with like the like hot or cool storage. Hmm. But I can't remember for sure if that's how it works. Yeah, that sounds about right. I think the idea is that you're going to move something to archive storage if chances are pretty good that you're never going to need it again, but you have to keep it around for legal reasons or something like that. So a lot of times it'll be like, you know, you can have these files accessible uh, and you need to keep them accessible for seven years for legal purposes. I don't know why seven is that number, uh, but most of the time it's not going to happen, right? Like I keep my tax records around for seven years just on the off chance that the tax agency decides to audit me six and a half years down the road. I'll still have those files, um, but it's not like I know where they are, like they're somewhere in my house, <laughs> but I don't know where that somewhere is. You'll find them if you have to. Yeah, so I'm prepared to pay that cost at the, in the unlikely event that they audit me again for bus passes like they did like 10 years ago, which I passed, by the way, CRA. Thank you very much. Anyway, uh, so moving files between these access levels, uh, you can do it manually, so you can go in and go through all of your blobs, make a decision about them, and move them into a colder tier of storage, a cheaper tier of storage. Or you can use these handy-dandy lifecycle management rules in here. Uh, so I have gone ahead and added a lifecycle rule here. We can add another rule at this point here. Uh, so we can delete them as the name of the rules. Uh, and you can set up some scopes around this. So you can apply this to all the blobs in your storage account. Um, you can limit it down to specific blobs, either inside of a container or with some additional filtering rules around it. We'll just apply it to, actually, let's see with the filter for now. Uh, and you can specify the blob type and even the, the blob subtype. So for instance, you can delete the versions. So if you uh, have versioning enabled, you can store like versions for six months or something and then delete all the versions as people generate new versions unless you're confident that those versions are no longer used. Uh, but we'll leave this as base blobs for now. Uh, so here's the rule that we can put in here. So the, the only rules really that you can add is checking how recently they were modified. Uh, so let's take a look at this one here. We'll say like if it was modified more than 50 days ago, then we can do a couple of different things. We can either move it to cool storage, uh, we can move it to archive storage, or we can just go ahead and delete that blob entirely. So I'll, I'll just move it to cool storage for now. And then what I'm going to do is add another rule here. And I'm going to say, if this hasn't been modified in the last 180 days, then I'm going to move it over to archive storage. Uh, and then we can even add a third rule, like if it hasn't been modified in 360 days, then we're just going to go ahead and delete that blob completely. 
And so these are the filters that you can add here. So you can either do a prefix, so you can put in like the container name that you have, or if you have maybe like a specific customer or a specific type of file. Uh, I know that one of the things that I typically do at the top level of my blog container is I will set up the different types. Um, so I'm on a project right now that has something called an MD resource. So I'm interested only in deleting anything that is in the container MD resource after these days. So we'll just go ahead and add that additional rule here. Uh, and you can also take a look at this in the code view. So it gives you a little bit of a JSON view of this. Uh, and then I have over here, handy dandy Terraform version of this too. Um, so I just have this resource group set up, the storage account, and then there's a thing called an Azure RM storage management policy, which is not a mouthful at all. Uh, where you can apply these same sorts of rules in here. So I have added in that initial rule that we saw when we first started here. Uh, so I'm just looking for anything that's a block blob, uh, and I'm actually matching on this thing called an index tag, which I'm going to come back to in a second here. Uh, and then the actions here are similar to what we set up before. So I'm going to move it to a cool tier. If it's greater than a day, I'm going to move it to archive. It's five days, and then I'm going to delete it if it's greater than 10 days. Uh, and I'm also going to delete any snapshots after one day. OK, so back to this blob index tag. So this is a new-ish feature inside of blob storage. Um, I haven't used it in a production system yet, but I've been kind of watching it move through a preview and then out into actual release. And if we go back into Azure, which is I think the best way of taking a look at this, and then over to our container, I'm just going to drop into this container and take a look at this one file that I uploaded here. Um, there are these new blob index tags now that can be added in here. So I can add something like customer ID. Also, only have one customer, uh, and with this tag in place now, these are indexed and searchable. So I can now in the Blob API client say, hey, give me all of the blobs that have this index tag on them. And it will return stuff uh, at any level in Blob storage. So this is kind of like a, a cross-cutting or filtering concern. Uh, and it also lets me do things like um, customer. So now if I am looking to delete a customer, say I have like a, a multi-tenant system and a customer is going to be deleted or is scheduled for delete, instead of going through and finding all of their blobs and individually deleting them, uh, what I can do is I can go through and just add this annotation here and say like, hey, this customer has been deleted. But a lot of times customers are deleted accidentally or we wanna retain their records for some period of time afterwards instead of just deleting everything immediately. So I can add this tag here and then it'll fall into the lifecycle rules that I had set up specifically for the scenario where the customer had been deleted. So now uh, Azure Blob Storage will take care of doing all the lifecycle stuff and going through and deleting everything as the time comes. Uh, so this is another really interesting way of being able to use the lifecycle rules and these blob index tags too. Uh, so this is just one application of where we can use them. We can also use them inside of our application as well for finding and searching different blob storage items. That is a fantastic use case right there, the customer deleted. It's, yeah. It becomes then a really fast operation that you just set that index tag and then you let the infrastructure take care of it for you behind the scenes. I, I really like that approach. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we, the, I was, um, trying to come up with a strategy for handling um, a bunch of customer data that was being uploaded to our site under a bunch of different customer accounts. Uh, and I was trying to like come up with a way of being able to figure out how many files they had in blob storage and then billing them for those files in blob storage. Um, and I had initially started with like, oh, I'll just write a process that goes through and iterates every single file of blob storage once a day and figures out how much storage is going to be used. But that is like, that's a slow operation and it's also an expensive operation because now I'm accessing every one of what could be billions of yeah. blobs. We're assuming that I'm going to be very successful here. Hundreds of blobs um, that customers have uploaded. Uh, 
so I was looking for a way around it. And the kind of convoluted way that I came up with, a, with around it was to use event grid. Um, so there is an event inside event grid every time um, a blob is added to blob storage. Uh, so what I could do was anytime somebody uploaded something, I could grab that event and on that event was the size of the object and I would just increment a counter every time I saw one of these things and go, oh, like, hey, this is perfect. Uh, now I have a running total of how much storage the people have used on the system. So long as I have an atomic counter, uh, that's fabulous because now I don't have to do that big long process and I can tell them instantly how much blob storage they're using. Problem was the other side, like if they go and delete a file, how do I get that information? Well, there was a there is an event that comes from event grid when a blob is deleted, and I was like, oh, okay, I can use that. But the trick was that that event does not contain the size of the blob prior to it being deleted, so I didn't know how much to decrease my counter by every time. So what I settled on doing was basically this thing here where I was going to flag all of their blobs when they deleted it with like a delete flag. And then I was going to monitor the life cycle events that come into event grid because they do contain the size. And anytime uh, something is marked as deleted, uh, we'll have a life cycle event that moves it over into cold storage or archive storage uh, once this flag is set on it. And then I can listen in on those event grid events, uh, decrease my counter, and then uh, the file will get deleted after a certain number of days. But the added bonus on this is that those files are still around in blob storage. So it acts as sort of like a recycling bin for me automatically that I can hold onto their files for an extra few days in case they realize that they deleted the wrong file. Then we can be the heroes and be like, oh, it's no problem. We'll just restore those files. So it was like a, an added bonus, which basically came for free on that. I was just thinking literally, it makes you look like a hero and you didn't really have to do anything. Exactly. That's what I'm looking for really, it. is just being a hero without having to do anything. So that's the goal. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, anyway, that is some of the cool features inside of Azure Blob Storage. Um, there are a couple of other ones that I kind of discovered when I was doing research for this one. So we might do another episode or two kind of related to blob storage, but I have said that in the past and then failed to follow through. So don't be too disappointed. I'm All right. <laughs> anyway, thank you everybody for joining us on today's episode. Remember to like, comment and share, and we'll see everybody next week. Bye. Bye.